Hi there, welcome to the tutorial on Human IK and Prop Interaction. Here you're going to learn how to do some cool natural looking movement like this by combining a couple of easy techniques. First what I'm going to do is import in my prop sword here. Now the first thing I want to do here is add in some prop shapes to act as dummies. Dummies are essential for attaching hands or feet to objects and enabling human IK. So first, I'll just scale down this cone a little bit, and then I want to duplicate it to create a dummy for each of my character's hands. To do this, I can just hold down the control key and drag to make another copy. The next thing I want to do is align all of my objects together. To do this, I'll just ensure they're all selected, and then use the Align Objects tool. Align them on all axes, and press OK. You may need to do some adjustments depending on where the pivot points of your objects are located. I'll just move my cones here to align with the handle of the sword. Now what I'm going to do is move and rotate each of the cones here to different sides of my sword, pointing in opposite directions. I can use the transform fields in the modify panel to the right to ensure that my angles are correct, and proceed to move my cones to different heights on the hilt of the sword. Okay, so you can see that everything is aligned, so what I'm going to do next is make sure these dummy props are attached to the hilt of my sword. I'll just select my dummy cone, then select Pick Parent, and pick the handle of my sword for each cone. Now when I move my sword, the dummy objects will move along with it. Next, we'll bring in Mr. Chuck here and set him at a reasonable distance away from the sword. Once we've got that set up, we'll go about setting the reach targets for both of the hands. First, I need to enter into the Edit Motion Layer panel, and from here, go into the Reach Target area. I'll select my character's right hand first, and once it's selected, the indicator will turn darker blue. Then you'll need to select the Eye Drop tool, then the dummy prop that you want the hand to attach to. I'll just do the same for the other hand, and attach it to the other dummy prop. You may notice that the hand positioning still needs some tweaking, but we'll take care of that later. Next, what you need to do in order for the hands to follow both the rotation and movement of the dummies, is go into the hierarchy of your limb attachment and select both reach object and rotation. Here I'm selecting a sub node of my cone to show you a common mistake that can be made here. The wrist will now attach to the cone, which is normal and can be adjusted later. Now notice for this top hand, that I will not select a subnode for the attachment. You'll see the difference later. For now you can see though, my character has some pretty messed up hand positioning. Since the hands are attached to the dummy objects now though, any movement I want to make to the hand should be done through the dummy objects instead. So next what I want to do is select my cone, then edit its pivot point and positioning a little bit to refine the hand. I'll just select Edit Pivot in the Modify section, and use my rotation and positioning gizmos to get a position that I think looks good. Notice though that the lower hand doesn't move despite me changing the pivot point. This was due to my node selection earlier. If I select the upper cone and edit that pivot point, you will see that the hand will follow along nicely, and I can rotate it to a position that I like. I don't want the positioning of the wrist to look too weird, so I'll also use the movement gizmo to move back the arm a little bit. Don't worry about the way the arms and chest look at the moment, as that can be also adjusted later. Once I finish the positioning of that hand, I'll go back into the reach target section of the motion layer panel, and this time ensure that I have the right node selected for my reach. You'll notice that after I switch it back, the hand will now position correctly. Okay, so now what I want to do is make sure my hands are gripping the sword handle. This is super easy to do in the Edit Motion Layer panel. 
All I need to do is click and drag from the selection area of the palm and the reference image to the right, and all the fingers will automatically close and open as a result. If you find a slight breakthrough or error like I see here, don't try to adjust it in the Motion Layer Editor. Instead, you need to go back out and adjust the position of the dummy itself. So basically now if I move my sword around, the rest of my character's body will go along with it by utilizing the human IK. But you can see that the initial positioning looks a little silly, so what I want to do is make sure I'm in frame 1 and adjust that using the Motion Layer Editor. Once I'm here, I can use a combination of rotation and movement to position my character in a bit more of a natural position. Adjusting both the arms and shoulders in this case is the recommended method to get the best results. You can rotate around your character to make sure the pose is good from all angles. So now if I exit my motion layer editor, I can select my sword prop and rotate it to see the results. Not bad. You can see some slight natural movement from the other body parts as a result of the human IK in action. Also you might want to hide the dummy objects as well by actually assigning them dummy properties. To do this, simply select the object, then click the Set as Dummy option in the Modify panel. Once you do this, the object will disappear. You can make your dummy objects visible again at any time by using the Ctrl D hotkey. Okay, so here I'm adjusting my character's base position to something that looks a little more natural for holding a sword. I've rotated his body forward and bent his knees slightly. Right now I'm repositioning the feet for a bit more of a battle-like stance. Notice that since my character's hip is pinned, that the legs will move by themselves without affecting the upper body. Now I'm going to exit the Edit Motion Layer panel and move my prop around a bit. The results look a bit better than they previously did. This is why initial pose is pretty important, especially with Human IK. I'll create a quick animation here by moving the timeline ahead, then adjusting the position of my sword by both rotating and repositioning it to the other side. Notice how the Human IK adjusts my character's body to go right along with the sword's movements. After I've finished repositioning that, I'll play back and you'll see a pretty slow but cool slashing animation. If I want to make the slash faster, all I need to do is open up my timeline and go into the transform track for my prop, then move the keyframe ahead to an earlier frame. Once that's done, you'll see a much faster animation. Once you have your character's limbs attached to a prop though, Body puppet motions will, for the most part, not work too well on your character, as you can see here. This is because both of the hands are pinned to the object that isn't moving. However, one of the best tools you can take advantage of in this situation is the Prop Puppet tool. To access this, make sure that your prop is selected, then select the Prop Puppet tool in the Modify panel to the right. Once here, you can choose a number of motion profiles and sensitivities. If I set this to Horizontal Movement and Preview, you can see the result as my character's body follows along the prop movement using Human IK. I can use the 2 key while I'm previewing to switch to vertical movement and check out the results for that too. Pressing 3 will switch to rotation, which will cause this sort of movement here, as the sword rotates on its axis. Also, I can go into the advanced section of the Prop Puppet panel and choose from any number of preset movement profiles to see which one suits my character's situation the best. Here you also have the option of setting your movement to a global or local axis, which is an important difference. The local axis will use the pivot point on your prop as a reference, while well, the global axis will use the scene route. Notice that all of the sensitivities on all of these motion profiles are customizable so you're able to make even more specific movements by adjusting those. Here, I'm going to use the simple rotation profile and record. 
I'll set the sensitivity up a little bit to get a bit more flair to my movements. Then I can press the record button and move my prop around smoothly using my mouse. After I finished recording, I can play back to see my character's cool looking sword animation. Once you've got everything attached and set, the Prop Puppet tool can be used to make really great and realistic animations. Lastly, I'm going to briefly show you how you can use dummy props to manipulate other props as well. Here as you can see I have my soldier character holding a gun. What I'm going to do is import in a circle prop here to act as a dummy. Next I need to select my gun and use the look at tool. Then select my dummy sphere. You'll notice that my gun will automatically snap to point at the sphere. If your object points in another direction, just adjust the pivot point like I previously demonstrated. If you want, you can also adjust the strength of the look at function. If I decrease that down to a lower number, you can notice that as I move the sphere around now, the gun won't follow it as closely as it did before. I can also change the pose of my character to something crouched like this, and use the same function. There's a lot of cool things you can do with prop dummies in Human IK, so try it out yourself.